Hey guys, say something nice here. Real quick before the video starts, I just want you guys to know that I am doing a fundraiser for the American Cancer Society. Um, I'm doing it through my local Relay for Life event, which is an event that the American Cancer Society runs throughout various cities to help fundraise um, for their organization. It's a great organization. All of the money goes toward uh, research, uh, but also care for patients who currently are battling um, the disease. And the Relay is a great event. Uh, if you have one nearby you, I encourage you. I've been relaying for wow, close to 15 years now. Um, so I'm really excited about this opportunity to see if you guys can also get involved. Um, and again, if you'd like to donate, link in the description below. And I thank you very, very much. Enjoy the video. I'm sick of it. Over one and a half million new cases per year. Over half a million deaths per year all in this country alone. Cancer is so widespread that it is nearly impossible to find someone who will not be touched by the disease in some way in their life. Many of you watching this have had relatives, friends, co-workers. Many of us will face it ourselves. There's a reason we describe horrible things as being cancerous. It's a disease that eats away at you, physically, mentally. It eats away at your spirit. Anyone who's been near it knows how difficult it is for anyone who's anywhere near the blast radius. People handle it different ways, and one couple had a unique idea. They would share their story, the story of their son Joel, with the world. And so, they made a video game. And that game is That Dragon Cancer. That Dragon Cancer was released in 2016. Originally meant to be released on the Ouya after Ouya helped back the project, the game was successfully kickstarted to release on Windows and Mac as well. The game was developed by Numinous Games, a small team put together by Ryan and Amy Green, whose family the game is about. It's what is known as an autobiographical video game, the first of its kind that I have played. And boy, am I glad I did. That Dragon Cancer is a light exploration game that tells the story of Ryan and Amy's son, Joel. Joel was diagnosed with a brain tumor at one year of age. This game explores the triumphs and tribulations the Green family had with Joel. The game starts you in the role of a duck, just on the lake while the boy sits at the edge of the water. You hear the Green family talking, talking about Joel. Ryan's other sons ask about Joel, and we learn that he's a toddler who is developmentally behind because he got sick at a young age. It is an introduction to the family. This transition to the role of Joel is an introduction to the game. The game often ends scenes in a perspective different than the one it started with. It's a great representation of the way cancer affects everyone that comes in contact with it. This scene also shows off impressive direction. The staging of the boy at the start of the scene is brilliant and makes it clear what is expected of the player. The art direction is phenomenal and it lends a great quality to the game. The openness of the family in conversation hooks you immediately. And as heartbreaking as the story is already, you are invested in this boy. Another interesting choice takes place in the next scene in a park. There are various stations with Joel doing various things. Audio plays during each station, and there's a quick minigame. Once you are finished with the station, Joel disappears from it. To go from playing with Joel to him being gone is quite sobering. I was unclear if this was a function design or an intentional artistic choice, so I reached out to Mr. Green, and he said it's a function of both. Yes, it helps lead the player through the scene, but he said they found the effect profound, and it made the sense of loss palpable. I have to agree, as I immediately noticed the weight of the empty space where Joel used to be. It reminds you of what you're playing. This game never goes far without reminding you what looms over everything in it. This gorgeous day on this brilliant island can't fully distract from the darkness behind everything. We learn there's a dragon around, and its name is Cancer. The game oscillates between real-world locations like a hospital room to fantasies like Joel dancing in space as a representation of his willingness to go to certain procedures. This captures the feeling of dealing with the disease. From a sharp sense of reality, you go straight into a surreal world where it's tough to determine what's real. Even this clock is a nice touch, and it shows the passage of time becoming inconsequential. The game is marked by its thoughtfulness at every turn. Adding to the surrealness is the way some transitions work with impossible space. Suddenly the room changes and the scene moves on. 
It's a neat way to break up the game, and it gives the player a sense of playing the game rather than just walking through a visual novel. Furthermore, this continues the theme of blurred reality. Things stop working the way they should. Time, space, everything gets fuzzy. The thought put in this game is overwhelming, but to this point I was doing fine. And then... It took me a second to realize what was going on, but when I did, I had to take a walk. These cards were submitted by Kickstarter backers, and there are just so many of them. I could have sent a few myself. I'm certain you could have too. And then you realize, this isn't even a whisper of how many people are affected every day by this disease. It drove home how personal this game is, to its creators, to its players, and to me. The next scene is one of the best I've seen in a game. It opens with Joel's parents sitting in concerned silence while you and Joel gleefully play with the sea insect. Raise your hand as you've seen this exact type of thing in any doctor's office. You play with the toy a bit and the doctors show up. Then they give you the news. I'm sorry guys, it's not good. The sea insect changes to have the faces of the characters in the scene. Then the brilliance. Every time you use the toy to pick a character, you get to hear their thoughts as the conversation goes on. You hear the father thinking he can fix it. You hear the mother shocked at how calm she is. It's poignant, but what sets this scene apart is the opportunity to hear the thoughts of the doctors as well. Their concerns that no timetable they give will ever be good enough. You hear the mother visualize the timeline given. And while it goes on, you hear rain building and building until finally it begins flooding. Then you end up on a boat with Joel, in the flooded room, taking in the overwhelming situation. It really is a breathtaking scene. Here the game changes focus, or at least it was here that another theme became apparent to me. There had been a theme of birds, and at first I thought maybe Joel had just liked them. But it was here that it becomes apparent they represent faith. The second half of this game explores the Green family's faith. There's an interesting bit where the father had difficulty grappling with his wife's assurance that God would save Joel. He feels himself drowning, while his wife continually assures him that Joel will be fine because God will save him. Eventually, the entire family sees every extra second with Joel as a miracle. But this very personal argument about how much to put in your faith was interesting, and I commend them for putting it in a public game. The family's together celebrating life, and then... The passing of Joel and the end of the game are powerful moments. Whether you are of faith, or like me, entirely without, the final two scenes are deeply affecting. I have never played a game this personal, and it's certainly an experience that will stick with me for some time. I did have some issues with game efficiency, as it began to sputter in more complex environments, but it's tough to tell if it was the game itself, or in relation to the new recording software I was using. It was not game breaking in any way, and it happened rarely. I'm not going to give this game a grade, rather, I'll just say it's an embodiment of what it's like to experience this disease. And it's beautiful. I will say that this game is one worth owning, and there's a companion documentary that goes along with it that's all about the game's development. But if you don't want to buy a very light, very short game for $10, that's fine, I totally understand. Instead, go to Numinous Games' website, link in the description below, and donate to them directly. While you're at it, go donate to your favorite cancer research fund. You could donate through my Relay for Life fundraiser if you'd like. Again, links in the description below. You could volunteer for various events around you or donate to your favorite lab or hospital. There are so many options for your time, your money, your energy, and most importantly, your support. There's a cure out there, somewhere. We just have to find it. And every little bit helps. Even just one dollar. Even just one afternoon. You'll be surprised at the impact that you can have for Joel, for the Green family, for my family, for your family, for all of us. Thank you for joining me. And remember, if you can't say anything nice,
Thank you.